Expectations dropped upon getting to the city. He plans to gas the planet, wipe out 80% of the population, and expect What the fuck? Now that we have accumulated enough money, we can finally start the part 2. Clever comrade. Do we have enough cash this time? Not quite. But I sold most of Sunbit's extra parts so this should be good. Are we going to lose from bit again? Maybe, I dunno. Let's begin. Now before we start with Doomguy and the rest of the OCs. Let's talk about Megamind's gear first. According to the wiki it is said it can act as thrusters and help Megamind with his reflect. But Megamind can already reflect it with no problem. Plus he can theoretically fly if he repels the ground. Which he can probably do since he repels everything. You may think it's useless but it's not. It gives Megamind plus 2 style points. It gave him a huge advantage against Falcon. Who didn't even try to use other tactics beyond punching harder because he's scared of ruining such trip. Now that we got that out of the way, let's proceed and talk about the original characters, starting with the Doom Guy himself of course. Doom Guy is the movie's secondary protagonist. A poor penniless person who lives in a trailer park in Orthean with his quirkless siblings. After being kicked out of their old home sometime after the public discovered their quirkless dad is working for Megamind's crew. Now he makes a living taking on criminal quests, which are super easy since there are no heroes in their area. But even then he's not super rich because reasons. Now like the shield chick from the first movie and these two kids from the second one. Doom guy also lacks a mother. Because MHA movies operate on a strictly no mom is rule. Why does this rule even exist? I have no clue. His quirk is this small pink sentient bird. We'll talk about this one later. Going back to Doom guy. His last name is Soul, which is strange since it's referring to this bird, yet none of the other family members have soul quirks of their own. I've always wondered about NHA naming themes, like how does it really work? Take for example. Punches. His name literally means thug. Did he change his name after he became a villain? Or is he named like that because his parents knew he's gonna become a thug? Who cares? All I want is a- Is it the same case with Doom Guy's family too? They changed their surname just because of it. you know what let's move on. So we are gonna talk about the positives and negatives of Doom Guy. But since we are a bash channel, let's start with the negatives first. His entire existence is convenient. He's always at the right place at the right time. Falcon somehow can't catch him just so he can swap the case with another one to advance the plot. How convenient. It just so happened that he knew how to solve this puzzle. How convenient. It just so happened that he knew how to fly a plane. How convenient. It just so happened that Mega Mind didn't even try to stop him. Just so he can deactivate the gas bombs himself. How convenient. You can the hero! You can Everything is so convenient it's like he never belonged in the first place. And the movie is just trying to make him important by shoving him everywhere. Now that we got the bad things out of the way, let's go to the good stuff. Doom Guy, for someone with a very limited screen time, is surprisingly popular. Ranking 9th in the 7th popularity poll. Now I have to say this, we may be a bash channel. But if you take away the movie's tendency to awkwardly shove him into scenes and force him to become important, I gotta say he's quite a decently written character. He's basically Deadpool. With his mannerisms and silly antics, but since he's a freelancer who works in his own time instead of mindlessly following what his leader tells him to do, that gives Doom Guy more character agency than Deadpool, and therefore automatically a better character. He also has his Parker skills, which can somehow outrun Falcon because of plot related reasons. He can also drive a truck, fly a plane, pull off never before seen facial expressions, and other things. Not only that. For an MHA villain, he's unusually sympathetic. Even more so than this guy and his Majid assistant. Sorry to cut and run, but the show must go on! 
from being kicked out of their home. To being forced into a life of villainy just to provide enough for his two siblings. To realizing he'll never get to reach his dreams of being a pilot. Everything about this guy is sympathetic. This level of sympatheticness for a villain has no counterpart in the entire manga series. Almost all MHA villains are just 95% evil and 5% nonsense, and have very little to no redeeming qualities at all. Is that good? Is that bad? Should villains be sympathetic? It's up to you. All in all, Doom Guy's character is good. It's just the movie's obsession with making him super important is annoying. Next, we get to the What? Hey Deadline, can you move a little? Oh sh where is my favorite again? I think I miscalculated a couple of zeros when I planned the budget for this video. That means if we have to maintain the animation quality of the presentation, we have to greatly reduce the budget of our little skits. No, no, not again. I thought you sold the part of- Apparently, that's still not enough. But unlike last time where we devolved into silly low effort skits. I have a backup plan this time. Bring me the laptop. Oh come on. There we go. Oh man the background stopped. What should we do now? We are going to mix tracking down Megamind and conserving budget for the presentation animations using this neat simple trick. But for now, let's proceed to the bird. Man this low frame rate sh** is making it so hard to type. Next, we get to the bird. Yes, Bob, the bird. <laughs> this small pink ball of feathers that can somehow fly despite having no true tail and being a nutter disgrace to ornithology is Doomsday. Doom guys work. It's a manifestation of Doom Guy's emotions, and that's pretty much it. It doesn't need to eat, sleep, drink, or anything. It's just there. It has no combat capabilities like other sentient quirks. Not much versatility. And not much use. As a quirk, it's always active. And the way it works is that it renders Doom Guy unable to lie. Well actually, it just does small gestures on what Doom Guy really feels about a situation. But since it just looks like a pet and less of a quirk, its anti-lying mechanics will mostly just be ignored by people who don't know how it works, so technically it's just a useless quirk. And said useless quirk is somehow hyped up and not revealed until the very end of the movie, just to create some tension in this final scene. It's kinda funny that Falcon said it's a good quirk. It's almost as if he doesn't know that white lies exist for a reason. And sometimes lying is just better in some situations. <laughs> now despite being a relatively simple quirk, Doomsday has some things questionable about it. First, why is it female despite being connected to Doom Guy's emotions? Second, how come none of the other family members have quirk birds of their own? Third, why is it capable of making its own decisions? Fourth, is she always required to spy on Doom Guy? Know that I will be there watching you, sometimes at inappropriate moments. That's part of the deal. Fifth, is she the spirit of Doom Guy's dead mom? That's why she's female and that no other family member have bird quirks. Sixth, can she fire lasers out of her eyes? Now we didn't get any answers on those. But do you know what really grinds my gears on this bird? The bird's name. Orthean is based off of Lisbon, which is the capital city of Portugal. In Portuguese, names that end in O are commonly boy names, and names that end in A are commonly girl names. And that's by a rule deeply ingrained into their language. This thing should be named Pina. But what do I know? Even Doom Guy doesn't even have a Portuguese sounding name. Why the hell am I even talking about name?
Okay we are finally in a video game. Using this we can conserve budget and track Megamind at the same time. Clever comrade. What now? Let's get to the cardboard car. We are going to the satellite relay station. Faster deadline I'm planning to intercept Megamind's arrival. Okay, let's go. Our spawn location super convenient. In a few seconds we'll be there. Man, look at that to sunrise. Yeah, I know it's very nice for a 2013 game. Okay, we're here. Clever comrade. Can I take your car for sure? Get the f out deadline, we shouldn't be wasting time. <coughs> Whatever. Whoa! What does this thing do? Deadline, make sure to keep watch. I'll go try to link in. I could use some hacking works over here. Buff up the phone, please. Here you go. Hold on, deadline, I'm getting something. Air cannon plus spring like limbs. Kinetic booster time. Deadline, you might want to start speaking in Japanese. We are gonna lose our remaining budget for this video if we keep sentence mixing your lines. So according to whatever crap you did to this phone, we need to go up the mountain to get a better signal for whatever reason I can't f***ing understand. Hey Deadline what the hell was that? Hey Deadline are you sure you have a quirk that turns this GTA world as a parallel to the real world? Then who the hell is that? Yeah whatever. Man the car's stuck. Hey Deadline help me out here. The door can go screw itself. Okay we're here. Hey Deadline stop messing with my radio. I'd like to keep it a non-stop pop FM. I think I forgot to leave a post-it note in front of the laptop. Let me send a voicemail to Miss Mind Layer for a bit. Oh hey Miss Mind Layer, if you see an open laptop on the studio desk, leave it alone. Me and Deadline did some stupid Blues Clues crap into it to better keep track of Mega Mind's approach. And yes, we are in GTA 5. This is an M-rated game. Get the little person as far away from the screen as possible. Deadline what the f- Never mind. I now know where Megamind would arrive. If that parallel universe quirk works exactly as the way I envisioned it. Palento Bay should represent North. We are probably in Hokkaido right now. Spare the pleasant place. I'm just naturally damn good at driving. Damn it took us till nightfall to find a replacement car. Of course we can all fit here. The only thing that won't fit there would be Yomama. Okay let's prepare. Wait I got an idea. What if I mess with the radio? Could I tune into Megamind's radio or what? My apologies. Deadline we've been hanging in this pier for hours now and we still haven't got a hint of him. Where the f*** is Megamind? Deadline it's quirk assisted. It should work. Deadline don't be silly there's no way we could even intercept. Oh how convenient. It's a blue helicopter. Don't you think it's a little to see that a blue attack helicopter is conveniently parked here? What if Megamind's using this to track us instead? No, but we are GTA characters now. We can fly anything. Whatever deadline. J 
just make sure you don't crash us into water. Deadline why you got a suckered flyer. Point taken. Now let's get ashore. Well looks like the interception attempt was a total fail. Now what? Deadline where are you? What the hell are you doing in the trunk? You mean that one dot over there? Well to be fair we are in GTA Online. It could just be your regular glitchy aircraft. Well, turns out that's not a regular glitchy aircraft. It's Megamind. And he somehow saw us in a made up parallel universe inside a video game. How convenient. Megamind knows a blue woman is in Japan, but he should take a while trying to narrow her location down. Let me warn Miss Mine Lair in advance. You go enjoy the beach for a moment. Hopefully I can finish talking about his buddies before he arrives. Miss Mine Lair get your ass over to the studio real quick we lost Megamind and he's coming to get you ASAP. Now that both Doom Guy and his pet bird are done. Let's move over to the remaining original characters. So we have 6 in total that I want to talk about. But since we've always been a villain center channel, let's start with the bad guys first. The villains are divided into two groups. The ones on the right are Megamind super troops. And the ones on the left are the Orphean hit squad. And since this poor fellow doesn't have a wiki picture, we are going to start with these three first. So this is the Orthian hit squad, spearheaded by Huntsman. Which is unique by itself because female characters normally don't get to be leaders of a group. Now judging by their code names and similar matching outfits, they're from a crime syndicate situated in Greece. Which is several countries away from Orthian. Why didn't Megamind just hire a local Orthian based villain group? Well to be fair Portuguese sounds similar to Greece anyways. Jokes aside. Huntsman's group is tasked by Megamind to go after a small card thing that was taken away by a defector. Said small card thing could be used on this special socket to completely disable the doomsday device. Now this mission can be done in two ways. Method A. Go in. And simply destroy the card, since it's irreplaceable anyway. Method B. Go on a needlessly complicated wild goose chase across the country and take too long trying to recover the small card chip for no other reason than to make the plot move. This is MAJ. Of course the villains would pick the stupider route. Method B. Wild Goose Chase. Anyways that's basically the hit squad's entire goal. Now let's talk about their individual members. Take note that I will not do a full analysis on them or else the video would become twice as long. Okay. Let's start with little miss totally not marksman's long lost sister from another mother. Huntsman. Huntsman is technically the second most active villain in the entire movie, with Doom Guy being the first. But despite her being an actual threat, Falcon is not actively responding towards her, and would rather run away the moment she's on screen. Why is Falcon running away from Huntsman when he's fought far more powerful villains before? The answer is because Huntsman is a female character. And the creator doesn't want male characters actively hurting a female character no matter how villainous she is. Why did you do that? I need you to hold on to me tightly. Damn it. Also notice this earlier scene where this guy slammed onto the helicopter, yet barely dented it. That's because Huntsman is inside. This whole inability to hit female characters is especially obvious with Marksman. Where Falcon consistently ran away from her. While you could argue that this is because Wynn told him to run. This is just a cheap excuse as to not have Falcon hit Marksman. Notice how he keeps running away even though he could easily knock her out with a couple of shockwave based attacks. How he doesn't even have a problem with diving into a hail of gunfire. Some of their members have quirks too! But no. Because Falcon is a male character, he's not allowed to hit Marksman. But if male characters should never hit female characters, how would Falcon ever defeat female villains? 
That's easy. Some outside force will conveniently defeat them. Look at how Marksman exploded just as Falcon got near, so he doesn't need to fight her anymore. Same goes with Huntsman conveniently running out of arrows and jumping off the helicopter just as God got near. So he doesn't need to fight her anymore too. As an extra example, look at 9 token. The cave roof conveniently gave in exactly as she was grabbed by Dumb Blaster. So she didn't need to get ground slammed. Huntsman's case is more awkward, because God can easily go after her as she fell. Flash can just create a giant ice slide. And Falcon can just jump up and catch her. But they can't do that. Or else they would have to fight a female villain. And none of them are allowed to hit her because they are all male characters. So instead of saving, they just watched Huntsman barrel through the air. Land directly onto some train tracks. And then get run over by a train. All while pretending to be shocked. Because that's what heroes do. Well actually she didn't get run over by a train. I just made that up. Now with all these things said, why the f did they make Huntsman female if they can't show the heroes beating her up? She's the main focal villain in the first half of the show, and arguably one of MHA's most powerful female characters. Especially with her ability to launch projectiles with insane piercing capabilities all the way to high impact arrows that are essentially guided missiles. Why can't she have an actual boss battle instead of just turning into a massive drama queen and then jumping off of her helicopter? This is so f***ing awkward on top of being so f***ing bullsh**. Pro tip. There's nothing bad about male heroes punching female villains trying to kill them. Now with that said, let's move on to the visual aspect of Huntsman. Especially her outfit. It's kinda strange that she's dressed like Robin Hood instead of an actual Greek archer. But you know what's stranger? This little red feather thing. It may look harmless, but this one feather has enough bullsh** in it to ruin Huntsman's entire image with its mere existence alone. For comparison, this is Huntsman with her hood down. Over here she looks clean and professional, like a true hitman. This is Huntsman with her hood up and the arrow visible. All I can say here is holy f Huntsman is so f***ing adorable. Isn't she supposed to look like a formidable hitman? Then why the f*** is she so f***ing cute? And then there's that one f***ing feather that's ramping up her cuteness levels to ridiculous proportions even further it's not even funny. She has no f***ing excuse to be this adorable. Damn look at her. This is cheek pinching levels of adorable. I'm going to give you the title of the cutest MHA character now. But only as long as you have your hood up. It's beautiful. Look at this for five hours now. Uruka de kawaii ototo. Yeah, she's an absolutely adorable human. Where the hell are we? Naze arangam. Well, it certainly looks like it. We've almost drained the entire budget for this video and now we can't even stay in a dedicated movie editor program anymore. But look on the bright side, now we can just get dragged around on screen without any effort on actually animating. Isn't this neat? Why yes we are deadline. I mean look at you, you're just a bunch of pixels in the anime, which oh. came from the manga where you're just an ink pattern on paper. Overall you're just a character being imagined within the creator's mind. You're certainly right. You, me, Miss Mindlayer, little person, all of us aren't real. Well some people could say we are more fleshed out than some MHA characters. But in the end none of us are real. Don't think about it too much. Oh hey they are here. Miss Mindlayer what took you so long? Where have you been? Been out for a bit. Miss Mindlayer can you speak in Japanese please? We ran out of budget again. For reasons I don't want to tell. <laughs> no deadline that was a deliberate miscalculation. 
It's all according to plan. But you should have been there. You should have seen them fall. All of them. Deadline. Japanese, please.望む者を与えよ。僕に協力してくれるならば力なき者に。ではその犬もテロリストどもに訓練されたいぬと見て間違いなさそうだ。いや、ヒーセ。デッドライン。クイック。ドゥアラフエスティメントオンハウロングン
and he's just waiting for Huntsman to pause a bit. And when Huntsman indeed paused for a bit, he immediately went in. Use these. These nuts. Ha! <laughs> <Got> he! Ha! <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and there it is. Buster managed to prank his boss to grab his balls. He's even looking at the camera. What an absolute f***ing legend. Alright, now that the Orphean hit squad is done. Let's move over to Mega Mind Super Troops. This one is the warden from Minecraft. He's big. He's strong. He's powerful. And he hates loud noises. He also has that obnoxious grin on his face. It could be either A. His face is just made that way. B. He knew about Buster's joke. Or C. He also pranked Huntsman to grab his balls. Well to be honest I have no idea why he looks like that. He's probably just high. On the other hand. This is Edward Scissorhands. And his twin sister Edwina Scissorhands. Yeah right no they're supposed to be twin brothers. But since one of them has a feminine sounding name then I'll just call it a twin sister. What's strange about them is that they have the ability to split, on top of having blades on their arms. What's even more stranger is that said splitting ability and their snake-like mutations are completely unaffected by quirk enhancing drugs for some reason. Or maybe because it's just not affected at all since the splitting snake ability is not really a quirk. And more like an extra ability given to them by the power of friendship. Jokes aside. These guys are obviously just last minute additions. Just thrown in to provide a boss fight for these two. How convenient that Megamind has two super troops at his disposal that can conveniently withstand both God and Flash. And how even more convenient that they are right beside him as the heroes approached. Anyways, what's interesting about these three is that they have English sounding code names, just like Megamind. As compared to the Greek sounding code names of the Orthian hit squad. The reason for this is never explained in the movie and I'd just like to point this out. And with this, we are finally finished talking about the villains. Now let's talk about the only relevant original character on the hero side. This is the Tracker Token, and her very punny name. Now for some reason, despite her just being a movie only character, she keeps getting shoved into as much scenes as possible. It's like every time the scene switches over to other characters other than Falcon and Doom Guy, she's almost always guaranteed to be there. As for her overall character design, she looks bland. She has no mutations nor anything that makes her stand out. She's just a regular looking person. But before we end I'd like to talk about the real elephant in the room here. The size of her f***ing thighs. This is the official artwork posted on the MHA wiki. And as you can see there's something off about her thighs. It's like they're several sizes bigger than usual. These are clearly not the average MHA thighs. These are the average MHA thighs, and as you can see they're- Holy f*** Miss Mine Layer has wider hips than Tracker Token. Okay then. So anyways, I'd just like to point out that Tracker Token's huge thighs look kinda gross.
のすべてを取り戻したスクナなら。You are making dinner tonight. What the fuck?